We thought the roads would be our biggest challenge that we face, our being to Alaska. We were wrong. An abandoned homestead, that makes it sound like it's private property. I don't know. The whole thing is really sketchy. Oh my gosh, I'm not coming in there. So we're currently on a journey up the Alcan, starting at mile zero in Dawson Creek. We have a goal today to reach a boondocking spot near Liard Hot Springs. This road has definitely got a little bit worse. Right here. Just out here in the middle of nowhere. Right here, and we're about to put that to the test. And even when things don't go our way, we are figuring it out as we go. A mistake has been made. I messed up. Good morning from our overnight spot on the side of the Alaska Highway. We're at a roadside pullout just past Fort Nelson a little ways, and today our mission is to make it to our boondocking spot near Liard Hot Springs. So we're nervous about this boondocking spot we're going to, um, mostly because the spot we were supposed to cut, our first spot since starting the Alaskan Highway, was a bus. Um, it was an extremely steep drop in to get in, so we just drove right on by that sucker. But it did, we, we ended up in a decent uh, pull out. It's like all paved. It looks freshly paved, has trash cans and stuff. Uh, it's just right by the road. That was the only downside to it. And Leland is doing parkour, so don't mind him over here. So this next spot we're going to, we're hoping that it, it's good. I'm, the thing I'm concerned about is we've seen a bunch of RVs go by this morning, um, and then not to mention however many went by yesterday. Uh, hopefully it's not full. That could be an issue. So, fingers crossed. It's actually a real big potential problem because Leard Hot Springs is one of the main destinations along the Alaskan Highway. We are going for the tourist trap here because it looks amazing and we love hot springs, so we definitely have to see it. But it looks to be the only decently big rig friendly free spot in the area, so uh, I don't know. What do we got going on here this morning? Um, one of our tires was a little low. It was like 80 something, where the rest of them are like 107. The little pump that open road and carry with them, uh, luckily, because we never bought one, even though we said we were going to. <laughs> it's probably not the best idea. Uh, it got it up to 103, which is nice. So I'm gonna just lower this on a few uh, PSI to match it. Why do you think it was low? Um, I think from taking off the tire pressure thing like this and putting it back on multiple times. Also, it was probably low from when it did leak and it just never did all the way back up. And we're off back on the Alaskan Highway. If you joined us last week, you know that the road up until this point, like to Fort Nelson has been pretty good. I mean, honestly, better than most Many roads in the state. In the lower 48, yeah. yeah. I Yeah, so no complaints there. A little bit of construction, but it's it's now past Fort Nelson and the closer we get to Alaska, it's supposed to be the worse it gets. So we will see how today's journey is. I was checking out the milepost to see what was on up ahead and something caught my eye. What was it? Cinnamon buns. Cinnamon buns? That's what they're up. Yeah. Cinnamon rolls. World famous, apparently, cinnamon buns at the Testa River Lodge. Um, thousands have said that they have gotten the best cinnamon buns they've ever eaten in their lives right here. Just out here in the middle of nowhere. Right here. And we're about to put that to the test because, you know, we have an expert cinnamon bun test taster with us here today. They don't even know what's coming. Cinnamon buns, apple fritters, just any kind of donut pastry type of food, I'm, I'm your guy. They didn't know the cinnamon bun critic of the world was gonna grace their presence today at their lodge, but here we go. Here, here we go. We go. 
get you, lovey. Oh, so yeah, no kidding. Wow. Is it real famous? It's pretty good. Okay, that was delicious. Very good, very good. Do you like it? Yeah. Among the best cinnamon rolls ever, the critic has spoken. I think they were good. Definitely worth the stop. I don't know how much they were though. Do you it, pay? It was a piece of Canadian, which is not not oh, bad. That's yeah. like normal. Yeah, like Could normal, be. especially these, they were huge. For homemade like pastries, that's pretty, pretty yeah. and they're huge, yeah. Yeah, and there is fuel here. It's more expensive than normal, but if you needed it, you could get it. Okay, this road that we're on though. This kid's oh, wow. That's like a million dollar highway. It is like a million dollar highway. Well, this at least has guardrails, I guess. Yeah. The drive, once you get past Fort Nelson and back into the mountains, is definitely prettier and more interesting than to Fort Nelson. We've seen more animals, just a lot more pretty views, some beautiful blue lakes, a lot of different things. However, this road has definitely got a little bit worse. It doesn't feel like a highway. It feels like a road you turn off onto from a highway. It, it's still paved. It's just got a lot of loose gravel. Um, it's not very even, so it makes you kind of like shift side to side constantly. But I don't know, it's still doable so far. I am curious to see how, like if it just continues to get a little worse over time. Oh wait, it's getting better right here. <laughs> oh, nice. Back to like Something. regular pavement, I think. I don't know, there's like patches. Uh, <laughs> oh, not bad. Not bad. It's definitely not, like we've been on worse roads for sure, but Craig would definitely be getting car sick if he was in the passenger seat because it's like the whole time. <laughs> and windy roads through the mountains. Yeah, I guess that's the price you pay for scenic views while driving. It's true. Honestly, this drive reminds me a little bit of Baja, especially with the really, really turquoise blue water that we're passing by right now. And then the roads are, you know, in questionable condition and there's no cell service. So it's basically the same thing. I spent the last 15 minutes telling Craig how pretty the lake was over and over again, but we are now past Muncho Lake, which had several good camping options at it but we're headed to our boondocking spot right near Liard Hot Springs. We're about half an hour away and I am just already starting to think through the backup plans in my head. I think our backup plan is going to be an RV park at Liard Hot Springs if we need it. I'm hoping we don't but man it has been busy on the highway today with RVs just passing the whole time and I just assume they're all going exactly where I want to go. I don't know why I assume that but it could be. Someone was flashing their lights at us, so now it's a mystery to see why. <laughs> Nothing. What's it gonna be? Maybe it's around this bend. Nope. Just around the bend. Oh, oh yes, yes, a herd of bison or something. Oh. Why couldn't it be a herd of bears? I know. Well, I don't think bears run in herds, but you know. Baby bison. Oh my gosh. Maverick. Oh, Matt, let Maverick. My boondocking spot arrival nerves are getting to me. I just, I don't know why. I know we can always just not turn in if it doesn't look good, but I still get nervous every single time. The boondocking spot is supposed to be right past the suspension bridge, which is the only remaining suspension bridge on the Alaska highway. So that's pretty cool. Is this it? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, we'll turn like the here. the spot? Like that's the spot? We gotta pull off on it. I don't know if this is the only spot or if it goes further up. I'm probably gonna walk up, but for now we can just turn off and uh, see what the situation is. Okay, it looks like the road keeps going back here. 
Can we get level that? Yeah, that's just one. I'm not 100% sure how many more there are, but that's all we can fit to the here if we needed to. Huh? Probably good spot to park. And then uh, right here. we can check from there if there's something we're in we'd like to go to. Oh yeah, this is a nice big spot. We'll pull in here for now at least. We're gonna get out and go scout this area around. I'm not sure we're not hit any limbs. Victoria. Yeah, well. Well, huh? Huh? Uh, this might be the spot we stay in. Well, might be. Right here. I think there's a fire pit. This is this is a spot. This is a spot. Good. But we'll see. Yeah. No limb hitting. No, I don't want that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go on. Scout party we have yeah. here. If, if anybody hits a tree, it's, <laughs> it's Kaylin's fault. It is her birthday. Everybody wish Kaylin happy Aww, birthday in the comments. <laughs> Let's camp in that. Oh yeah, there's an abandoned homestead here too, by the way. An abandoned homestead. That makes it sound like it's private property. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very much like somebody was living here. I think at one time this was somebody's property. I don't know if it still is. We found it on iOverlander. I think we're gonna end up in the spot that we originally pulled into because everywhere else has some low hanging limbs. And I think the worst that happens is somebody comes along and says, you guys, you gotta leave. And then we'll just leave. So it's fine. Well, it's pretty flat though. It is flat here. So I think we're gonna just pull kind of straight in towards the trees to just leave us enough room to unhook the truck and pull that out. And uh, yeah, I think we'll get enough sun and everything here as long as there is sun. And then Starlink will be in the back. Yeah. So it yeah. should have Plenty of room to get away from all the obstructions. I'm gonna check how level we are here in this spot. Let's see. Oh, we're just a little bit back high. So I think we'll be able to fix that without needing any blocks or anything like that. But if you pull forward just a little bit, uh, maybe if two feet or something like that, they'll probably level out even more. Well, we did it. We made it. Craig's already I'm on the tired. <laughs> so much driving. Driving wears me out, guys. I don't know about y'all, but dang, it feels so great to come and lay down after a long drive. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Our boondocking spot right now has worked out. It seems a little sketch with yeah, all the stuff yeah. around. There's even an RV that came and never left in the woods over there. Well, that's called a single wide trailer. Oh, was it not an RV? I oh, thought it was like a bus not. or something. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but. I'm also gonna tell y'all about what it's been like finding boondocking spots along the Alcan so far, or at least searching for them, how I've been searching for them, because this spot is not on Campendium. So. I'm calling get, this meth campground. Don't you want to come to it? It's a great spit place. <laughs> but we're going to get to that in just a little while. Okay, now the whole reason we came to this boondocking spot and stay, are staying here for the week is so that we can visit Liard Hot Springs, which is in the middle of total nowhere. There used to be a gas station. It used to be right over here where we're staying, but there's nothing there anymore but an abandoned building. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's just the hot springs. It's a provincial park, and then there's a lodge, like an RV park, and there is gas there. So we'll have to get some before we head off. So the place we're boondocking is like two miles down the road from uh, the hot spring, which is really nice. You'd think we'd get up early and go earlier, but some of us just takes forever. Some of us. <laughs> some of us have work meetings. <laughs> 
So it's only $5 Canadian a person to get into the hot springs. Very, very reasonable. Or you can pay $10 and get a whole season pass and then come a million times in a week if you want. There's also a campground and it's like $26 a night. And I don't know if there's any services or not, but- No hookups? I don't know, hmm. I don't know. There's overflow it. parking you can camp in. I know that doesn't have hookups also. Yeah, just across the road. That's probably where you would wanna be if you have a big rig. I think the campground here is very tree too. So that's why I kind of had counted it out because we wouldn't have been able to use Starlink here because there's just lots of trees. There's also an electric fence all the way around. <laughs> that's true. What do you think it's for? I don't know, I guess bears, moose. I think moose kill more people than bears, right? Am I wrong? I don't know. Maybe. Thanks. Have Thanks. you guys been here before? Yeah. yeah. All right. Just no food alcohol and smoke down there. Enjoy, right. guys. Thank you. So once you get here in park, it's just a short walk on this boardwalk to the hot springs. And there are changing rooms at the hot springs, but by changing rooms, I actually just mean... Open rooms. <laughs> yes. There's a men and a women, but it's just a big open room. So maybe come with your bathing suit on under your clothes unless you don't mind that kind of thing. I dare you to go over there. It's bubbling. It's gonna be really hot. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's like down in the neck. Oh gosh, yeah. You just gotta... Ooh. It like just instantly gets so much hotter. Like, that's like crazy. Where you're at here. But then I'm like, it's not hot where I am. It's like, you gotta swirl it around. You gotta swirl the water around. <laughs> nice, it's burning. So the water temperature in the hottest part of these pools is like over 120 degrees. I think that's the hottest hot springs we've ever been in. The way they have it set up is there's like an upper pool and a lower pool. The upper pool, the closer you get to the spots where you see all the little bubbles coming up, the hotter it gets. You're almost to the bubbles. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. It's so hot. <laughs> And then they have a lower pool, which actually has these pretty little waterfalls draining some of the water from the upper pool down into it. It's a comfortable temperature, especially if it's a little warmer outside. But as you go to the far end of that pool, there is this little river kind of thing that gets colder and colder. And it definitely, being from Florida, I am convinced that there's just gonna be a gator jump out and get us, even though I know there's no gators here. So at the end that the hot water's at, where it gets hotter, I think the hot water's coming up from the ground, but it gets very hot over there. And then like along that the edges, there's like cold water that's dripping in. So it's, it's pretty cold coming in, but I don't know, when, when you're close to the hot side, it's like hot just as soon as it, you get under the into the water. Um, when you go down the little river area though, it's different because it's like the cold water is coming up from the ground and you'll find like little sections where it's extremely cold coming up out of the ground. It's, it's very interesting. It's pretty cool to explore too. And like Victoria said, you feel like you're in the Amazon jungle or something waiting on a gator or a big anaconda to get you. I do think that these are probably the prettiest hot springs we've ever been to. Oh yeah, so, for sure. It's, I like that they don't have like, it's not a concrete pool, it's natural. They have clearly like made it. Dug it out. Dug it out, made a big area for people to hang out in. Very much a soil and rock bottom still. Yes, and you get all of the plants and trees and flowers. I also, don't know. The water is so stinking clear. So clear. It's insane. Um, if you're going to Alaska and you don't stop at Learn Hot Springs, there's you something wrong out. with you. you <laughs> out. Yeah, you missed out. These are definitely some of the best like natural hot springs. It is uh, $10 Canadian to get in, or five a piece. Yeah, but like, what, that's like four bucks? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's still, it's, it's so way worth, worth it. it. Especially so like, worth it. like this is a really great session to do like a overnight break. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, I don't know, you might as well. I'm so glad we stopped here. This is awesome. And check out, like, look at what's ahead of us. Go on now, go get uh, eaten by the, whatever's down there. Whatever's down there. <laughs> Have snakes. I don't know what they have. Apparently there's only like snails in these waters. Oh, that's a cold set. Now, is, could there be a bear right spiders? up there? The no, because of the electric fence. Oh yeah. Wait, does it go all the way around that here? I don't know. 
Okay, let's get to the end. And it's still so clear all the way back here. Oh my gosh, it's cold uh, and right here. Yeah. It gets shallower and shallower. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's like a little waterfall. Where's the water go though? I don't know. Water? So that was a super enjoyable hot spring soak. I even found a little fossil rock, like a leaf fossilized rock thing. It was very cool. There's a bit of a sulfur smell though, but it's not bad. It's definitely still worth it. Like I wouldn't even almost worry about that because it's again, like one of the best hot springs we've been to. And now we're going to head back to the RV. Um, got a little bit of arts and crafts going on. A little competition. Mm. See who can arts and crafts best. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about this boondocking spot that we're in. It's actually been quite good, despite all of the abandoned buildings that make it a little bit sketchy. Nobody has kicked us out and it's been peaceful and the road noise isn't bad. And we've even gotten to see wildlife. Like there was bison and a bear right outside our RV. It was scary and exciting, the bear especially. The first time I saw it, I ran away. Second time I saw it, I got some pictures. So they will be on the screen right now for you to see. But to be totally honest, finding boondocking spots out here on the Alcan has turned out to be much tougher than we thought it was gonna be. A lot of the spots are just roadside pull-offs, which is totally fine for an overnight, but when you need to stay somewhere for the entire week to like work, living on the side of the road for a whole week starts to feel a little weird. So this is what we've been using to find our spots out here. First, Campendium. It's not that great, but we're still using it. The thing is, is Campendium's crowdsourced, so if nobody's ever put a spot on it, it's just not gonna be there. And not many people have put that many spots on Campendium. Second is iOverlander. This one has actually come in clutch for a few spots now because it's just got a lot more spots listed. However, it still caters to people with smaller rigs, so we have to be really, really careful because we've got two big rigs out here. So we've been also using a lot of Google Maps satellite view and street view to try to check places before we get there. And I've been getting a lot of good information from Facebook groups. Um, I'm a part of several that are just about RVing the Alaskan Highway and I've gotten some good, good info from there. And of course the mile post, it lists all the roadside pullouts pretty much and a lot of campgrounds, but isn't the best for like actual real boondocking spots. If you enter your email at the link in the description below, I will actually email you this list of resources that we're using to find spots along the Alcan, plus any more that I find by the time this video comes out. But now, you know what time it is? I assume we're making our signs. <laughs> so if you don't know, in Watson Lake, there is the signpost forest, which is exactly what it sounds like, a place with a bunch of posts and people put signs on them. Some people plan ahead and get their signs made so that they're pretty, but we didn't do that. Probably gonna disintegrate within a year. Two years. So if you come to Alaska within the next year, you can see our sign. If not, probably not, but you know, whatever. Anyways, it's a competition because we're making two signs. You get one. You're always trying to hit me with stuff. And I get one. And we're going to be making a sign for Wild RV Life. And we're gonna be making a sign for Shine Tallahassee. You wanna tell them what Shine Tallahassee is? Shine Tallahassee is a nonprofit organization that is put on by our church back in Tallahassee, Florida, where they help special needs oh. teens and adults. Struggle like butterflies in water can't keep moving forward. I see your shoulders. And every year, they partner with Tim Tebow Foundation to put on their biggest event of the year the night to shine prom. I will walk on glass. I will run 10,000 miles and more. I will keep my eyes. If you lost your sight, I will run through fire. I will carry you through the heat. I will do it all again. If you need it, me too. If you're in our community, you already know about them because 10% of the proceeds go straight to Shine Tallahassee. And so in honor of them and our community and us, we're making two signs. Does this mean you're making the Shine Tallahassee sign and I'm making the Water View Life sign? Uh, what one's more likely to be messed up? I don't know, you're pretty crafty. 
Well, whichever one I do, just know that it's not going to be perfect. Uh, I might give up halfway through. Tell them, tell them in the comments. It doesn't have to be perfect. He just has to try. That's what matters. Okay, so the plan is that we will use these pins to trace the letters and stuff hard and it will make indentations on the wood and then we will use our paint pens to paint it. Sounds pretty simple. Does sound simple. We're gonna find out. We though. will see how it goes. All right, I'm doing my first line. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. Okay, okay, okay. Oh gosh, see, it started to go the wrong way. Uh -oh. Me now? Distracting you. I'm making this hard. I don't wanna do it. <laughs> it's supposed to be a fun arts and crafts. We're almost done. I don't want to do this again. <laughs> we'll just order some next time. <laughs> oh, come on. You're not having fun with arts and crafts? My hand ain't. When we get to the painting part, it'll be better. Can't wait. The black. Black, black. It's working. It's working. It's working. <laughs> I can't really figure out what colors to do for our logo because normally I like orange. I mean, normally we just have like the black on the orange or like the burnt orange color. We won't have that color. So I'm gonna do blue. What do you think? I think this is a pretty color. I think it'll work. Wow. One letter down, 50,000, 100 million more to go. It's looking good though. That's the best cursive S I think I've ever seen. I do feel like Craig's is coming out prettier than mine, and I don't know why. Why is yours prettier? Beats me, dog. A mistake has been made. I messed up. I spelled Florida wrong. I missed the I. I don't even know how. I was. I thought I was tracing it. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> it was going so good. It still kind of says. Florida, it's Florida. It's supposed to be Florida. 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 Oh no. <laughs> what do I do? Oh man, how'd that happen? That I just... knew it was gonna happen. There was just too many letters. I knew it. <laughs> too many letters? Yep. Uh... Gum it. Fixed. All right, big reveal time. And you gotta let us know what one you like better in the comments. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. <laughs> 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 this is my sign. Now I did this one, I know. I messed up at the bottom. I got I tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think they turned out pretty good. We do have this uh, clear acrylic stuff we're gonna spray on it yep. so that hopefully they'll last a little bit longer. The first rain doesn't wash it all away. Yeah. But hey, now we got signs to put in the sign post for well, us. Well, we got something. I don't know if there's signs or not, but we got something. We got something to put up there. But if you wanna see us put them in the sign post for us, hit that subscribe button because that's gonna be next week. Yep. We are, oh, we're about to go over the worst roads of the Alaskan highway, supposedly. So. Uh, I'm not ready for that. But if you want to see what we did to prepare for the Alaskan Highway, you can watch this video coming up next. And thank you guys for joining us this week. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.